we want to gravitate so often in our minds to what's broken and what isn't working, to what we envy in other people, to what we covet, to all of that acquisitional energy. And gratefulness really lives inside a celebration and contentment with what is. You're listening to the Mindful Mama podcast, episode number 280. Today, we're talking about the power of gratefulness with Christy Nelson. Welcome to the Mindful Mama podcast, now with over a million downloads. Here, it's about becoming a less irritable, more joyful parent. At Mindful Mama, we know that you cannot give what you do not have. And when you've calm and peace within, then you can give it to your children. I'm your host, Hunter Clark Fields, Mindful Mama Mentor. I help smart, thoughtful parents stay calm so they can have strong, connected relationships with their children. I've been practicing mindfulness for over 20 years. I'm the creator of Mindful Parenting, and I'm the author of Raising Good Humans, a mindful guide to breaking the cycle of reactive parenting and raising kind, confident kids. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you, dear listener. Whether you're new or you've been around here for 280 episodes or fewer, I'm really grateful to be connecting with you. To whatever degree you're on this journey of creating more awareness, studying your heart, your mind, your nervous system, showing up more fully for yourself, showing up more fully for your kids, I am glad you're here. I really appreciate you. And if I haven't said that enough to you lately, I apologize. I really, really am. And I just want to let you know. And this is going to be an amazing episode today. I'm so excited to talk to you. I am talking to Christy Nelson. She's the executive director of a network for grateful living and the author of Wake Up Grateful, the transformative practice of taking nothing for granted. And this is such a powerful episode. Christy is a stage four cancer survivor and she's turned her life and and seeks to really turn the lives of others towards gratefulness. You'll hear me come to tears a little bit in this episode. It's really so very powerful, and it's one I hope to listen to again and again. And we're going to talk about what does it mean to truly live gratefully every day, really truly live gratefully, and what is a life of gratefulness? What are the transformative effects of like changing your perspective? And practical steps, how to bring more gratefulness into your day. So listen for some important takeaways, as usual. I want you to listen for embracing the mud, savoring and cherishing the things that you love, and how to kind of turn our minds towards that, and how generosity is an outcome of a foundation of gratefulness. This is completely an episode to be sharing with your friends. I'm so happy that you are here. I think that you will be happy to listen to all this all the way through. I glowed for days after talking to Christy and I feel very grateful that she came to join me on the Mindful Mama podcast. And you know what's cool? Actually, I'll let you in on this, which is really pretty neat. So we like clicked immediately. We had a great rapport. And then she contacted me after we recorded our conversation. She said, hey, I just figured out that we have met before. And Christy and I had actually met when she came to a family mindfulness retreat that I was on. So crazy how things happen like that. I love that kind of serendipity. So I know you're going to love this episode. Just before we dive in, I want to let you know that we are almost sold out in the Mindful Parenting Teacher Training Program for 2020. We are enrolling now so that you can go through the Mindful Parenting Program and then bring it to your community. And some of the ways people are using this is so cool. So the teacher trainers have, you know, a lot of them have gone through their practicum and they'll be certified soon. And they're using this to teach in-person courses in their communities teaching it to paying clients, to getting grants to teach it to low-income communities. We're working with some programs teaching mindfulness in schools to bring mindful parenting to the parents so that it's not just, you know, if a program focuses on the children and the teachers, you know, we've missed this like big picture. We want to also focus on the families and the parents too. So some of the teacher trainers are joining me inside mindful parenting as coaches. So there's so many different ways this can be used. So if you are interested in getting one of those last spots, act quickly, mindfulparentingcourse.com slash teach. 
That's mindfulparentingcourse.com slash teach. If you're already a parent coach or you're a therapist or a teacher, this is a great piece to add to your already existing practice. So check it out. Apply at mindfulparentingcourse.com slash teach. And now let's dive in on to this episode with Christy Nelson. Christy, thanks so much for coming on the Mindful Mama podcast. I'm ecstatic to be here, honestly. Thank you so much for having me. So you are you are the executive director of a network for grateful living. That sounds so wonderful. You, you probably have to be sort of obsessed with gratitude to kind of be the director of a network for grateful living. So I'm just wondering if you can kind of take us back in your story when you got into, into working with gratitude in the, in the way you probably are. Well, this is an organization that's been around since the year 2000, and I've been the director for seven years. And I really got incredibly turned on to the power of living gratefully, which is really what this is about. It's not just gratitude. It's about what does it mean to really live our lives gratefully when I survived stage four cancer. So I come from a big cancer history and uh understood a lot about the power of it as a practice. What does it mean to really practice living gratefully every single moment? And in the way that's very akin to mindfulness, it's something that living mindfully is really different than having a mindfulness meditation practice where you just sit on the cushion. This is really about living our lives gratefully. Mm -hmm. So the subtitle of the book that I wrote, it's uh, the title is Wake Up Grateful. And the subtitle is the transformative practice of taking nothing for granted. Mm. So that's really the root of gratefulness as distinct from gratitude, you know, in a way it's really about an orientation to life. So when we don't take anything for granted, it really energizes all kinds of possibility. It's, it's a pretty profound way to go through life. And often people who embrace their mortality or face their mortality in some way, get a much more intimate relationship to that experience. So anybody who's faced cancer, who's dealing with chronic illness, um, who's had a really hard accident, I call them wake up calls. You know, when you've had a wake up call in your life, it wakes you up to what's important, what matters. And then it's pretty powerful how grateful we can be in those moments. And it's also powerful how quickly they slip away. So I think that's Mm -hmm. one of the things that, really has my attention and my interest is how we maintain a perspective Mm -hmm. that allows us to stay grateful. And that takes practice. Wow. There's so much in there that you mentioned. Um, I want to talk about how to maintain a perspective. Um, But, you know, to me, what you're describing is like these, you know, when, when I worked as a painter, I was very interested in the memento mori. I did all these dead birds for a long time. And I was really interested in the idea of the just exploring death, looking at death. And because of the reminder that when when we're reminded of death, we're reminded of how precious life is, you know, and, and not taking anything for granted. It kind of reminds me of so it also reminds me of like I have um my grandmother got married in 1922 and she had this, she has a set of blue crystal uh, serving wear that, and, and I had, um, I had one blue crystal goblet that was all etched and beautiful. And I, I have some of the things that, that were given to me and this one blue crystal glo- goblet. I was like, this is ridiculous. This is beautiful. It's lovely. I'm, I want to use it every single night. And so mm-hmm. I started using that goblet every single night for my glass of wine at dinner. And in my mind, I did a practice where that, that comes from the Buddhist tradition that is like, this is already broken. Mm-hmm. This is already broken. It's it's already gone. And so I would just appreciate it as much as I could in those moments, just appreciate the holding it and the beauty of it and everything. And lo and behold, it broke. <laughs> because <laughs> there you I go. used it so much. And I'm not using such a nice wine glass anymore. But anyway, the, with that practice, I, I don't I don't mourn it in the same way because I was really, it sounds so stupid to talk about it with a glass of wine, well, but I was really fully present with that glass, uh, that beautiful goblet that was my grandmother's, you know? 
It's profoundly ironic because one of the stories in the book is actually called grateful, grateful for a glass. And so, which is amazing. (laughs) And so what I say is gratefulness is really not concerning ourselves with whether the glass is half empty or half full. It's about being grateful for a glass. So that's the most beautiful illustration, right? And so to say, we don't put off the things that are really poignant and precious to us. We don't keep the beautiful goblet tucked away in a cupboard where it's completely safe. Nothing is promised to us, no amount of time. So why would we wait? So I think there's, you know, the chapters in the book are titled things like treasuring and savoring and cherishing. And when we live that way, we much more actively pull the things out of storage that we love And we much more actively and we're much more likely to give away the things that we don't have bandwidth to appreciate. So it's a, Mm. it's a pretty powerful simplifier. And I I love what you're saying. And I just want to say, you're really unusual, like okay, (laughs) back to (laughs) painting dead birds. And, (laughs) and we were actually founded by a Benedictine monk who was Mm. very close friends with Thich Nhat Hanh and the Dalai Mm. Lama and Desmond Tutu and a lot of the big uh, religious and spiritual leaders uh, and very close to Buddhism and kind of mystical Judaism. And so he was this amazing interfaith leader. His name is Brother David Steindlerast. And St. Benedict, which I never knew, says, uh, keep death always before your eyes. Mm. And Brother David started this organization in the year 2000 when to to create a container for his teachings after surviving the second world war and almost dying and then coming out. And what he realized was when he had faced death and they didn't die, all the kids who ran into the basements of the churches and the houses and stuff to escape the bombs, they would come out and the blue sky was more vivid than anything they'd ever experienced before. Their sense of aliveness was greater than anything they'd ever experienced before. So he basically said, I'm going to take to a monastery and go contemplate this for 40 years. And he's been a, you know, a lead writer about this and his teachings are some of the big teachings on gratefulness, but that's really what it is about. It's really about life is precious. Life is surprising and unpredictable. So let's be alive now with our hearts wide open, savoring every moment that's ours to savor. And that is living gratefully. It's really noticing everything there is to notice, being mindful, being aware, noticing, and then acting on those things from a place of wholeheartedness. And it's kind of regret-free living. It's a little bit more, it is really interestingly a regret reducer when we live that way that doesn't take for granted that we've got more time, mm-hmm. that doesn't take for granted that we've got more opportunities, but actually is a carpe diem kind of a way of life. Mm. It's amazing. I think that that it, for me, it brings to mind there's in, in the, I studied in the Buddhist tradition of Thich Nhat Hanh, and in that tradition, there are the five remembrances and they are something like, I don't remember them all, but there was something like, <laughs> that's funny, <laughs> ironically, <Okay. laughs> but there's something like, uh, we, you know, I am, and we all are of the nature to get sick, grow old and die. Right. Yeah. Like the, mm-hmm. just remembering that nothing is guaranteed to us, nothing at all. Like change is constant. And yet our brains <laughs> like to think that there's permanence, like to think that there's change. So you survived you sur- you survived cancer. Can you take us back to kind of like, mm. what were you like? And, and what was your perspective on these things before cancer? Were you, mm. were you living as gratefully then? I imagine mm-hmm. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, what was interesting was I was 32 when I was diagnosed and it was uh, stage four. So that's an end stage cancer. That's pretty serious. And it was metastasized all over it. It ended up in my spine. And so Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk. You know, it was a really hard thing before, before that I had already, um, done Vipassana meditation. I had, I was a yoga practitioner. Uh, I was a vegetarian, you know, I just kind of, I had been living really healthy and, um, those things were really important values in my life. And 
uh, something profound deepened. And kind of as you're saying these, you know, the, the precepts or whatever from Thich Nhat Hanh and from Buddhism, there's a deepening that happens when we face our mortality squarely. You know, it, anybody who's got the opportunity to do that and then the incredible privilege of continuing to live mm. is really blessed, honestly, because I think there is an ingrained perspective that comes from that, that doesn't die to us easily. And I had friends who would say to me, oh, you'll go back to being the same and everything will be exactly the same. And I said, no, there's no way I could because it was the most, all those weeks, literally months in the hospital and everything, it was a very monastic experience for me. I was you know, tethered to intravenouses and I couldn't go anywhere. And just, I had fevers of unknown origins. So they wouldn't let me leave the hospital for weeks and weeks on end. And when you're 32 years old, that feels like a decade. And everybody else is not having a great time. So it was a huge teaching experience for me and, and a very profoundly spiritual one, I would say. Uh, it, it was a connection with a depth that I had been longing for. And it was interesting because I remember working with a nurse who said to me, um, your peer group is now in their seventies and eighties. And I was 33 years old. And she said, because you've really faced the fact that life is not permanent and that you have no idea what's going to happen next. And in that space, my aliveness grew. That's the mm -hmm. paradox. Mm -hmm. The paradox is that when we can acknowledge impermanence and if we're willing to muster what it takes to hold poignancy, poignancy being the awareness of the limitation of time in the midst of meaningful experience. Poignancy is one of the most beautiful words in the world. If we approach life with poignancy, and a lot of people go, oh my God, that's such a sad word. You know, don't make me so sad. And it's the, it adds richness and depth to all of life because then we don't take something for granted. Mm -hmm. In the awareness of the limitation of time and in the midst of meaningful experience, the ability to hold those together in that place where they rest with tension creates an aliveness in me and in other people I see and living gratefully awakens us to that. It's basically saying, what does it mean to take nothing for granted? Whoa, you're alive right now. What are you going to do with that? What matters to you? And it's a reconnection all the time to what most deeply matters. Stay tuned for more Mindful Mama podcast right after this break. We are thrilled to be sponsored by Green Chef because they are the most sustainable meal kit, offsetting 100% of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box. So you can feel great about what you're eating and how it got to your table. So listen, you know, if you have been like home for the pandemic, cooking every single meal, you don't know what you're missing. It is so wonderful to get high quality organic food delivered to your door with tips and exact amounts and ingredients for how to cook it in a like really yummy way. I have adored Green Chef. Green Chef lets you choose from a wide array of easy to follow recipes, perfect for keto, paleo and plant powered diets, or even if you just want to eat in a more balanced way, the Green Chef chefs, they design these really flavorful recipes that go way beyond the ordinary. So it's this diverse set of meals that you get to choose from every week. We've had like chicken with harissa sauce, barramundi fish with chipotle lime aioli, and always has so many vegetables so fresh and wonderful. It's really amazing. Everything is handpicked featuring organic vegetables and high quality proteins delivered right to your door. Everything's pre-measured and it's mostly prepped, which is different from other meal kits I've tried that it's mostly prepped. So you don't have to do so much chopping. Even my daughter who's 14 has really enjoyed making the meals. So it's all there. Everything's there right for you. And it's so easy and delicious, and it just makes healthier lifestyle easier. Go to greenchef.com slash 90hunter and use the code 90hunter to get $90 
off, including free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash 90 hunter. You can find that link right where you're listening to this podcast in your device. You can flip to the notes and you can find that link greenchef.com slash 90 hunter. You get 90 bucks off, including free shipping. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. I can't recommend it enough. It has made life so much more enjoyable and easier. I know you're going to love it. Go to greenchef.com slash 90 hunter. Yeah, we get this, this one precious fleeting life. We're not guaranteed any time. Yeah. And so what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it right now? What are you going to do with it this afternoon? I, um, I had a friend, one of the most joyful people I ever knew in my life was a friend I made in college, a guy named Reggie. He was like a, he's like six feet tall, big old black guy with long dreads. And he had the biggest smile in his life. And he used to go swing dancing and he used to like mm. swing me like around his belly, which was so fun. Sounds so but fun. I, he, um, he died when he was 21 or 22, wow. maybe 23. But when I went to his funeral and he had a, of course, an enormous funeral, um, so many people there, we were all spilling outside of the church. I found out what I hadn't known before then, which was that he, when he was, um, 16 had been given six months to live. Ah, there you uh, with go. a terminal, terminal heart condition. And he lived six more years, mm. which was amazing for him. And he didn't do anything but watch funny movies. He <laughs> laughed and he uh, danced and he, you know, it was, he was one of the most alive people I've ever known. And, um, you know, and I, it's like, sorry, it's a big, no, I mean, that's I, just, yeah, I like beautiful. remembering him. I mean, yeah. I like remembering him, but you know, just like, yes, now I know why I know why he, cause he realized it like you did. You, you realized that you, you made it real in your body yep. that, that I am dying, you know, I'm eventually going to die. Right. Which Unmortal. We all are, right. Yeah. Right. To just embrace and acknowledge, acknowledge, admit that we're mortal is such a huge thing. And we're, we live in a culture that I think wants to convince us that we're not, you know, that we're omnipotent, <laughs> that we can control everything. We can get cryo frozen or something, you know, and we can preserve ourselves forever and go to another planet. Or I don't even know what, but the lunacy of it all. Whereas what is so beautifully life enhancing is, is really when we let go of that, all those ideas that we can control everything and say, I'm here now, and this is a gift. This life is a gift, this moment, this afternoon. What am I gonna do with it? Because it's precious. How do I not lose sight of that and contact with that? And that's the invitation. That's the invitation, every moment, actually. So, you know, I'm feeling it. I'm sure the listener, you're feeling it like, mm -hmm. yes, like this is is so, so important. How? But we do lose sight of it, right? Like we're busy. Like the, you know, dear listener, you might be listening to this while you're folding laundry or going for a walk or driving somewhere. Yes. We're, we're all like doing something, you know, my listeners, we got kids, like we're trying not to freak out at our kids and we're trying to live a, a good life at the same time. How, how do we, how do we remember this? How do mm. we keep putting this back into our bodies and our minds? Mm. I think it's, it really does start with how we greet every moment, right? So to me, there's something about uh, Maya Angelou say, says, this is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before. So treat every day as a gift, as an unexpected, right? So instead of taking it for granted that everything becomes like a luscious surprise, and, and we don't want to live that way. So it's like, you know, we're just depressed all the time. It's just to the degree that holding that awareness that, oh my God, I'm waking up again today. And let me greet this day with a sense of how lucky I am that my lungs are breathing. You know, during a pandemic, here I am, I'm able to breathe. I'm waking up in bed. My body can move. I can get myself, I'm comfortable maybe in my skin and the air around me. Taking nothing for granted is how we greet the day, not just kind of writing in our gratitude journal at the end of the day of everything that went right, 
mm-hmm. because it might only be a few things, but it's like, how do we take just, here's this day. How am I going to greet this day? I'm going to greet this day as a gift. Mm-hmm. I'm going to treat this day as a gift. And when we can do that and we model that for our kids, it's like, you just, it changes how I relate to the people in my life. Because if I don't take them for granted, if I don't think, okay, I've got the next 10 years to make right on that relationship. I've got, you know, mm. I've got the next bunch of months to, to take forgive, do offer forgiveness on that um, some way that I have felt slighted or to have that difficult conversation or to hug the person that I completely adore. Um, what if we don't take those things for granted and instead say it matters now? And it basically frees us up and liberates our life energy so much to live now as if it really matters. And so I think it changes how we engage in our lives and in our families in a big way. And then the feedback loop reinforces it. So it's a powerful um, rhythm that we can set into motion. And we are often the agents of, of making those things happen in our lives and being the teachers. And so we need to be the students. Mm. So I wake up every morning and I made a practice to wake up every morning and just say, thank you. But I like what you're saying. The idea, you know, sometimes when I lead a, you know, in the mindful parenting membership, I lead a gratitude meditation sometimes. And And one of the things I invite people to, you know, if we are lucky enough to have like two hands that Mm -hmm. can hold our children and hug our children, like what a gift that is. If we are lucky enough to have two legs so we can walk and run and play with our children or what, or whoever, like what a gift that is. And sometimes we, yeah, I think we forget because we're so trained by our society to be looking to stuff. Yes. for happiness, like, yes. um, or entertainment, right? We're looking, you know, we're trained to spend our money and spend our, our resources on stuff and entertainment and that we forget to, you know, we're just in, that's like this sea that this water that we're in. And so we forget to say, oh, I have two hands. I have two legs. Like, mm. yeah. Thich Nhat Hanh teaches like, let's be grateful for our lack of earache. <laughs> You know? Yes, exactly. When, when you have a or the earache, toothache, the yeah. toothache, right? Then the toothache goes away. You're so grateful for it, right? So, yes. but when, but you forget then. So that's it. You're on it a hundred percent. So digging maybe a little deeper each day and saying, "I'm I'm alive," and <laughs> at some point, there's going to be like the last time I get up from this bed. You know, mm-hmm. there's some point like, like. How, I guess maybe how do we, you talk about how to maintain it. How, how, how can we maintain it? Like, we're like, yes, we're remembering right now. And, you know, I'm feeling it right now. I'm seeing my, my daughter on the hammock out the window right now. And I'm saying, yes, yes, yes. But how do we, how do we maintain that through like the distraction, right? Like we are so just distracted in life. Yeah. I think it's, it's a simple practice. It's not easy. And it's very similar to mindfulness, which is coming back to awareness over and over again. And I say it's perspective. Perspective is the gift that we can give ourselves and give our children is to keep enhancing that sense of perspective. And the perspective is I have, I can tune into all of my senses. That is extraordinary let's listen to something like, so tuning in in any moment, like what can I be grateful for right now? What we focus so much Hunter on what's broken, on what's missing, on what we wish we could have more of. Like when you were talking about that consumerist society, the drive to, well, I'll be grateful when I have more of this and different of that and new of this and this changes and I look like this and I have this, you know, and so our, our, our gratitude ends up being incredibly conditional. And one of the things that I think is the most powerful practice is to land our experience of being grateful in the more unconditional, right? So that what's powerful about that is then no matter what, we can be grateful. Whereas gratitude has a lot of conditions to it, right? So 
I'm grateful when I have a transaction and it goes the way that I want it to go, or I receive something I wanted to get. Whereas the unconditional is more just what you're saying. I can move, I can breathe, I can love, I can learn, I can grow, nothing. Even for me, stage four cancer took me away from the ability to love, took me away from the ability to have compassion, to treasure the capacities that I did have, not lament the ones that I didn't. And so that's a powerful practice because we wanna gravitate so often in our minds to what's broken and what isn't working, to what we envy in other people, to what we covet, to all of that acquisitional energy. And gratefulness really lives inside a celebration and contentment with what is. We look at what is and we say, just as you're saying, it could always be otherwise. And your friend Reggie, didn't know the day before he died that he wouldn't be here two days later. The people who are, you know, people who aren't here today didn't anticipate not being here. It doesn't mean that we have to think like, oh my God, I might die tomorrow, but we have no idea. And in the face of not knowing, how do we live? Hmm. That's a powerful question. In the face of not knowing, how do we teach our children to live? How do we teach that savoring, treasuring, celebrating, cherishing, that is the truth of how we really want to lean into life, as opposed to what I think we end up resorting to so often, which leaves us with a lot of regrets and not connected to the things that matter and the people that matter most to us. Mm. I love everything you're saying, Christy. This is Thank so you. beautiful. You, you, <laughs> it sounds weird to say it, but you had the experience of a near death experience. Like yes. you had stage four cancer. Hopefully we're not going to, you know, hopefully we don't have to, to get there. But I, I mean, it, what it points to me, like there's a saying that I bring up in the mindful parenting men- membership. That's also by Thich Nhat Hanh, And he says, no mud, no Lotus. Yes. And you had some mud, like you had this stage four cancer and what that saying means, no mud, no Lotus. It means that, you know, what it, we need garbage, like a good gardener went to have the flower, the flower of awakening, right? We need compost and, and any good organic gardener knows that you need compost and compost is rotten, nasty stuff. It's, <laughs> it's poop. It's like rotten vegetables. It's all this stuff. Like it's dirt and you mix it all up and then becomes, and then the gardeners call it black gold. Right? right. But that's also with like our difficulties and our challenges. So, you know, like for me, all the work that I did came out of my, my, some real nasty mud that I had a real bad temper, like incredible you know, anger that was arising out of me. And like, for you, you had this mud of your cancer, right? Like you had, you almost died. You had to go through incredible suffering. And then you have the flower, this lotus of this incredible gratefulness. So, you know, we just, I say that just to point out like our challenges can give us so, so much, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, like I'm not wishing anyone to go through stage four cancer to get to the place that you are at. So in the, in the network for grateful living, how do you help people? I mean, how do you help people get Mm -hmm. to get to that place of where you're at Mm -hmm. with this? Mm -hmm. Great question. And of course, everybody has mud. I mean, that's the thing. The illusion is that some people don't have mud. <laughs> and so we, you know, we look around and it's like, oh God, I wish I had that person's life. Uh-uh. You know, um, just scratch a little beneath the surface and you're going to find mud. And that's the truth of life. And what we make of the mud and what we make of the compost is all in our hands. And so again, I would say that it comes back to perspective. And so part of what we do Uh, A network for grateful living is an amazing, and right now it's mostly online. It's been online mostly. And then we were starting to really branch out and um, do workshops. We did a, um, I've done a couple of years of workshops at Kripalu Yoga Center, and um, I was going to be teaching at 1440 next year. So just, we're doing a lot of things out in the community and events and stuff, but it's mostly what we call an online sanctuary. And if you haven't been to gratefulness.org, 
and that's G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L-N-E-S-S.org. Just pay a visit. It's, it's pretty stunning. What we do is we help people to have perspective and to maintain perspective in their daily lives. And so we have lots of practices. We have a, a quote every day. We have a daily question, um, both of which are meditation prompts for people. Uh, and then we have all these different practices and community portals and uh, readings and videos and stories that people tell about how they've navigated a really grateful life in the face of difficulty. And I'll tell you, a lot of the people who come to us are people who, what they realize is it's out of the mud that they realize they want to live more gratefully. It's their experience with that, which says it's not because people could think, oh, gratitude, it's such a privileged position. Oh, to be grateful. It's only the people who have everything they want. And I'm here to say to the contrary, that it's people who are struggling with life not going as they expected or thought it would, that they're woken up and they're woken up to this life is precious. And I want to be able to maintain my sense of how precious it is and how privileged I am not to lose touch with that. A lot of people who are grieving, mm -hmm. we serve a lot of bereaved people, hospice, nurse, we serve a lot of healthcare, frontline healthcare workers, teachers, therapists, coaches who bring it to their practices. It's a powerful way to go through life. And the, the thing that I was going to say is nobody would wish any ill on anybody. And yet mm -hmm. what happens is we all have experiences unanticipated that do wake us up, those wake up calls. And it can be literally escaping some incredible crazy accident on the side of the highway and sitting in your car with your heart beating through your chest, you know, just going, oh my gosh, I'm alive. And I want to go home and hug everybody I love. Or, you know, your best friend's house burns down and she loses everything. And you say, wow, that could have been me. You know, I was two houses from that. I have a lot of people in California who went through the fires and had all those near misses. And those things are wake up calls. You break your leg. Guess what happens when that cast comes off? Just like Thich Nhat Hanh, you appreciate the absence of the broken leg so much. But then we forget to continue to appreciate the fact of having the legs. So that's what we're trying to do is remember in our moments because it's so life enhancing, joy enhancing uh, to remember all of the privileges of the moment and that it could be otherwise and not to lose sight of that. And so that's what we help to do in this with our work. And that's what the book Wake Up Grateful is all about, everything. Stay tuned for more Mindful Mama podcasts right after this break. We in the Clarkfields family are very excited about the end of school and the start of summer, and we are going to be doing some swim team. My 11-year-old and I are doing some gardening, and there's definitely going to be some camping in our future too. So, you know, what are you doing for the start of summer? It's just around the corner, and why not gift your young innovators with super cool STEAM projects to celebrate the end of the school year? With a KiwiCo subscription, your child gets a new crate full of fun science and art projects every month for our trailblazing toddlers to more experienced explorers and every single stage in between. I am so enamored of so many of the KiwiCo crates that I don't know which one to tell you about because I love them. I'll tell you about the Tinker Crate. So it is for ages five to eight and they do these wonderful projects. My daughters did the arcade claw, but I love this fun with flight project. So the kids get to build a stomp rocket and some kites to fly. And I know that we love kite flying in our family. And you get all these high quality materials, you could do it together with your kid, and then you've got this wonderful thing to go outside and to explore and to propel this rocket into the air. How much fun is that? And what a joy to see on your child's face. With Kiwi Co Crates, you cultivate your child's natural creativity and curiosity with a new hands-on project every month. 
They'll explore new worlds and rediscover familiar ones, even without leaving home. So high quality materials, everything is shipped right to your door and there's no commitment. So you can pause or cancel any time. And I know as a parent, it's so hard for us to find ways to keep the kids busy and screen free while stretching their brain. So KiwiCo does the legwork for you. So you can just spend more quality time tackling a project together and having fun together. And you watch their confidence grow as big as their smile. With KiwiCo, there's something for every kid or kid at heart every month. Get your first month free on select crates at kiwico.com slash hunter. That's K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash hunter. And kind of behind what I'm hearing you say is that, yes, it's like there's individual practices. There's, there's individual things we can do. There's perspective we can take, but I'm also hearing behind what you say that there's community, right? Yeah. Like we, we're not alone. And when we do something in community, when we get support, then we go deeper, we go faster, you know, we go, we, we take it further. Right. So that, that idea of community and, and I love what you, you said about perspective, right? Like this idea of perspective, it's kind of like stepping back and it is, is is very much involved with mindfulness, the idea of clear seeing, right? Really yes. clear seeing. And your the perspective is like grounding in what's real, mm-hmm. you know, grounding in what's real. Like my body is here. My heart is beating. Mm-hmm. My lungs are working. My organs, thank goodness for my organs, right? Like my feet are touching the earth. I'm eating food. I'm running water, right? Like that's really what's what's real in our life. I can touch maybe my child's face and like all of those things are going away. And so that perspective is really about grounding in a, a in an embodiment of, I am a, 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 you know, a, a mortal human being here on earth, you know? So. And I am, and I am so blessed by the things that we tend to take for granted and in the pursuit of wanting and thinking that we need more we bypass so much beauty. And mm. there, there are five principles in the book that mm. I've, and there's a bunch of perspective, um, points of perspective too. Um, but the five principles are life is a gift. Greet each moment gratefully. You are always receiving. Gratitude waits for something to happen. And gratefulness just waits for us to be awake. So life is a gift. Greet each moment gratefully. You are always receiving. We don't have to wait to receive. We're receiving in every single moment if we maintain our awareness about that. The second principle is everything is surprise. Open to wonder. Opportunities abound. So everything is a surprise. Open to wonder, be in wonder, be in curiosity, lean in to that sense of surprise. And suddenly there's opportunities everywhere. Third one, just come run through them. The yeah. ordinary, the ordinary actually is extraordinary. <laughs> there, there is no such thing as ordinary. The ordinary is extraordinary. Yes. Take nothing for granted and life is abundant. You have all the abundance you need in the world when you treat everything as extraordinary. It's just Mm -hmm. the truth. If you look at our opportunity to be here right now on Zoom, connecting hundreds of miles apart on this day, in this moment, during COVID, and we have technology and we have everything, it's just so stunning. And so there's a willingness to be in awe. To tr- and there's a vulnerability to awe that is so gorgeous. The willingness to be thin skinned, to experience things really fully, all of it. What I call the great fullness of life. So the great fullness of life is everything. It's what you were saying, which is the mud, the all of it. So can we be great? What I, one, of the, one of the chapters in the book is gratefulness is gratitude for the great fullness of life. That's what it is. The basically is gratitude for the great fullness, fullness of, of life. life. That nothing escapes us, that we never, we're not holding back, but we're actually fully leaning into all of what's being offered to us. Fourth principle, appreciation is generative. Tend what you value and what you value thrives. 
Mm. And if that isn't a principle for parenting, I don't know what no is. No kidding. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm writing this down, Kristen. And what you value. And what and, you value thrives. And what you value thrives. And yeah. this is a great, great, it's it's different than um, kind of the all the manifestation thinking, which is if you appreciate something, you get more of it. We don't appreciate in order to get more, but what we appreciate, Lynn Twist, who I used to work with, says who wrote a book called The Soul of Money, which is beautiful. What, what you appreciate appreciates. So what you appreciate appreciates, which is it grows, it thrives. And what's true about that is that has to do with your values. Tend what you value, tend your values, tend your principles, tend what you treasure, and those things will thrive. If we don't tend what we care about, it's never going to thrive. And so it's an immediate feedback mm. loop. So appreciation is actually generative. And the last one is love is transformative. Love is transformative. When you embrace the great fullness of life, your heart overflows. Mm -hmm. And your heart overflows into generosity, into empathy, into compassion. It engages us. It becomes an engaged way of being in the world because when we embrace the great fullness of life and we see clearly, clear seeing, again, all of these similarities to Buddhism, mm -hmm. when we see clearly and we feel clearly and deeply, we are moved, our hearts overflow. And it's just a natural thing as the extension of generosity, the extension of gratefulness is generosity, as opposed to we learn that gratitude is a response to generosity I think generosity is an outcome of a foundation of gratefulness, that mm -hmm. when we live gratefully, generosity just blossoms. It literally, it becomes so organic to want to give and to want to feel into other people's experience. So I, you know, I've always been intrigued by money and I've worked in that field a lot in my life. And so I always used to think like, what comes first, you know, asking, giving, receiving, thanking, how does this whole thing work? And I think from the wellspring, the deep wellspring of gratefulness, when we live that way, it's extraordinary what emerges in our lives, what arrives in our lives, that sense of we're always receiving and what that blossoms us into is a more generous way of being. Mm. Amen. Wow. <laughs> so life is a gift. Yeah. Everything is a surprise. Be open to wonder. Extraordinary ordinary is extraordinary. And life is abundant. It's so true. Like this tiny little snowdrop flower outside my studio right now is like, if I take the time to really sit down in front of that snowdrop and give it attention, I know I'm going to like fall in love with it. You know, it's, exactly. it's going to open me up to that awe. You know, exactly. and it's tiny little things like that. Even if you're looking at a little weed that's grown up in the crack of a sidewalk, right? Like, it's like, if you really look at that, like, wow, it's amazing. The shapes and number four, appreciation is generative. Yeah. Ten, yeah. what you value and what you value thrives. Yes. And love is transformative. The fullness of life. With the <laughs> fullness of life, love overflows. I love yeah. this. Yeah. Embrace it. And it's, I'm so grateful to be with you because this stuff is, mm -hmm. and I love that you're, that you're soaking it in because it is so powerful. And what happens for me is I become kind of unstoppable in how much I want to make sure that my love and my, my grateful heart are known mm -hmm. from this place. Right. And you can feel it when you feel that kind of aliveness percolating more in you, it's like, wow, life is precious and life is short. We have no idea what's going to happen. It just makes me want to go out and hug everybody. It makes me want to go be connected to the things I love. Yes. And, and that's a vulnerability. That's like, we need to just embrace that vulnerability mm -hmm. and go towards that. Holding our hearts wide open is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a way that in gratitude, when we're outside of gratitude, ingratitude when we have ingratitude um when we're not grateful mm, okay. it feels like we're protected you know it, there's a kind of you think about people who are walking around with a lot of entitlement a lot of expectancy a lot of you know all of these things about what they deserve and assumptions in the world and stuff and I'm, i'll be happy when and it's a very self-protective way to go through life and it's a very different way to go through life to really have your heart wide open 
mm. embracing all of these principles mm. and wanting to share that with everybody you're around. And it, you land in bed at night a lot more expressed, fully expressed and embodied about what you care about. Mm. <sighs> this is so beautiful. Um, you know, you're making me realize like the, in the final um, chapter of my book and in the final module of mindful parenting, we talk about gratitude because it's so, so important when we offer some, some practices, but I'm curious to you as for what, what are some of the, what are some of the practices that, that you offer for mm. people who say, Oh my God, yes, yes, yes. I want to take some of this home. I want to cultivate this. I want to be a good gardener and cultivate mm. this in myself. Yeah. Embrace the mud, um, <laughs> embrace the mud so I can grow the Lotus. Um, you know, I think there's such a beautiful opportunity to, it comes from us, obviously. I mean, we all know this, right? Like, what are we modeling? <laughs> um, and, and so I think one of the things that I would say is it's so amazing to say to your kids. And I was thinking about this. I'm so grateful to be your mom. Mm. I'm so grateful you're my child. Mm. I'm so grateful we're family. You're making me cry. Oh my uh, God. Me too, right? <laughs> I'm so grateful we're growing together. I'm so grateful that we have the love in our lives that we have. I never take that for granted. If you say that to your kids and you start to model that that is the most beautiful, vulnerable, powerful way to go through life, mm -hmm. and you take those risks, mm -hmm. it's not about the things they do and we're rewarding, you know, just by thanking them for setting the table or making their bed or doing the obedient kinds of things. It's the bigger things, the unconditional things, which is like, I'm wanted and loved for who I am, for my existence on this earth. I'm grateful you exist. I'm so glad you're in my life. And, and I think those things go so far, right? And then, and then from there, we can teach our children what is it like to not take any of what we have for granted? What would it be like? What, what do we take for granted? Ask your kids, what do we take for granted that would be amazing to notice that not everybody else has? Mm. Instead of clean your plate because other people are starving, you know, and so then you, you know, like I was raised, um, you know, there's always some country and it's, you know, uh, but it was, it's guilt inducing or whatever, rather than how can we celebrate the fact of what we have, how blessed and privileged we are, what wants to be uplifted? What would it be like not to have electricity? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that for a minute. What would it like if we didn't have hot water? And so then like when you take a shower, can you really appreciate the hot water on your body in a way that's different? Like that you didn't know that you were always going to have it. Mm. Like maybe it's going to run out. Like, like how do we teach those perspectives? It's all about perspective which is what is plentiful in your life? What do you have enough to give away? What, you know, one of the, one of the practices in the book is um, around appreciation is generative is if you have more than you can appreciate, right? So what we have wants to be appreciated actively. It's, that's what is uh, life beautifying and enriching. If we have more than we can actively appreciate, and I use the example of like, you've got these deep shelves and you never look at the stuff in the back of the shelf and it's just sitting there collecting dust and it's memorabilia or things that you feel kind of sentimental about or something. But wouldn't it be amazing to let those things go to somebody where it's the front of their shelf, mm. where somebody else actually has the bandwidth to really actively appreciate things that we don't have the bandwidth to appreciate? Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. everything wants to be appreciated. So I just really think there's a lot of ways to take kids on a journey that is about deep appreciation and learning not to take for granted. Mm. I think there's going to be some conversations had after, <laughs> after this, this podcast. I hope so. I, I'd love to come back. I mean, honestly, I just think this is the richest, most beautiful thing. And you know, one of the practices is everything comes from the earth. When you sit to eat, look at how the salt, the pepper, mm. 
-hmm. everything you eat, every fruit, every vegetable, every protein, everything is connected to the earth. What does that teach us? Mm -hmm. Like not to take the earth for granted, our clothing, our everything. And so we can deepen our sense of the values that are and principles that our children are growing up with by modeling appreciation for what we value and that what we value thrives when we tend it, when we pay attention to it. Tending is just paying attention, as you know. Attending, yes. Attending. So there's mm-hmm. more and more and more. I mean, one thing about the book is it's loaded with, with practices and opportunities. And it was really fun to write. I've never, well, it wasn't fun to write. It was really hard to write. It's hard. It's really <laughs> hard be real. to write a book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> First time author. Uh, but it was, it's a joy now that it's out. Let's say yeah. that. And that it's getting to be alive unto people in the ways that it's meaningful. And uh, it has a lot, a lot that it wants to do in people's lives and a lot that it can bring to your listeners' lives. And I know you're all about community and it would be really wonderful if this conversation got to continue among the people that you serve. I, I think it will. I guarantee mm-hmm. it. I guarantee there will be wonderful ripple effects from this. Um, Christy, you have made me feel more alive this afternoon <laughs> and I am grateful for you <laughs> for doing that. I'm going to go out and hug my children and they're going to be like, mommy. <laughs> 11 and 14, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, so share with the listener again, the name of your book and mm. um, where they can find out more about this work. Thank you. Oh, and then another thing is there's lots of book groups. There's a free book guide. So on our website, I'll first the website, the website is gratefulness.org. You can also find it at grateful.org. We just bought that URL, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a network for grateful living. And it's loaded up with stuff. And at the top nav, you can find Wake Up Grateful. You can also find it's on Amazon. And the full name of the book is Wake Up Grateful, The Transformative Practice of Taking Nothing for Granted. And it is transformative. You can find it all over the place. And then we do um, offer something called gratefulness gatherings. And so there's all over the world right now, there's like 42 in the United States and a bunch in other countries these gratefulness gatherings and also a book group guide on the book page on our website, which you can download for free. It was created by somebody who's done amazing book guides and, um, and people can work on this kind of stuff together. It's really nice virtually or in person. And again, the power of reinforcement when we support one another, like you're doing so beautifully with mindful mama mentor, that work goes so far when we lean into each other to support our journeys and being more attentive to what matters most deeply to us. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, Christy, thank you. Thank you for, I know it's hard to write a first book. I've done that. Thank you for doing that, for sharing your voice. Thank you for coming on here today. Thank you for making this, uh, the work that you're doing in your life and sharing it with the world, because it's, uh, it's affecting me. I know it's affecting so Mm. many listeners and there will be ripple effects out into the world. And I think that's amazing. I'm (laughs) super appreciative. So thank you. Thank you. And I'm honored and it's a huge privilege to have this opportunity. So thank you so much for opening this time. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Be well. say wow she's wonderful right what what powerful work i hope that this is inspiring you to bring more gratefulness into your life to practice it if this is something you want to share i think this is such a shareable podcast right like we need to like share this we need to remind each other to get this perspective to see the beauty and the abundance and the the love and appreciate these things in our lives right like before this is a short experience we have on earth. Let's appreciate it. So if you want to share it, a great way to share it is to just like, you can take a screenshot and share it on Facebook or Instagram. That's what I do when I share podcasts. Another way to share it is that you can see clips of Christy and I talking on YouTube on the Mindful Mama Mentor YouTube channel. So you can see clips of the video from this episode, as well as you can see short teaching sessions from me on that YouTube channel. So when you go there to share it, subscribe so we can grow the channel and get this information out to more parents because the more, you know, you share and and you rate and review and comment and share all that stuff. It like gets this revolution movement, this movement moving. 
So I really appreciate you doing that piece to share. It makes such a big difference. It really, really does. So don't doubt your power. You are powerful. So thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you have tons of appreciation in the week ahead. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate this way we can connect. It's really, really special. And I feel really fortunate to have stumbled upon podcasting way back in 2014. So thank you. Thank you. Wishing you a beautiful week, my friend. Namaste. I say definitely do it. It's really helpful. It will change your relationship with your kids for the better. It will help you communicate better. And just, I'd say communicate better as a person, as a wife, as a spouse. It's been really a positive influence in our lives. So definitely do it. I'd say definitely do it. It's so worth it. The money really is inconsequential when you get so much benefit from being a better parent to your children and feeling like you're connecting more with them and not feeling like you're yelling all the time or you're like, why isn't things working? I would say definitely do it. It's so, so worth it. It'll change you. No matter what age someone's child is, it's a great opportunity for personal growth and it's a great investment in someone's family. I'm very thankful I had this you can continue in your old habits that aren't working, or you can learn some new tools and gain some perspective to shift everything in your parenting. Are you frustrated by parenting? Do you listen to the experts and try all the tips and strategies, but you're just not seeing the results that you want? Or are you lost as to where to start? Does it all seem so overwhelming with too much to learn? Are you yearning for a community of people who get it, who also don't want to threaten and punish to create cooperation? Hi, I'm Hunter Clark Fields, and if you answered yes to any of these questions, I want you to seriously consider the Mindful Parenting membership. You'll be joining hundreds of members who have discovered the path of mindful parenting and now have confidence and clarity in their parenting. This isn't just another parenting class. This is an opportunity to really discover your unique, lasting relationship, not only with your children, but with yourself. It will translate into lasting, connected relationships, not only with your children, but your partner too. Let me change your life. Go to mindfulparentingcourse.com to add your name to the wait list. So you will be the first to be notified when I open the membership for enrollment. I look forward to seeing you on the inside mindfulparentingcourse.com.